Are you interested in making compost tea? How about increasing your vegetable yields while improving the overall health of your plants and disease resistance? In this video, I'll be showing you how I make a simple compost tea, but yet it's very effective, and how I've been using it in my garden for years. This video is chocked full of information about compost tea. You don't want to miss it. Compost tea is just a liquid concentrated form of compost, and we all know how good compost is for the garden. It's the biology in the compost that we're pulling out and using it at a diluted rate, applying it to plants foliage or as a root drench, increasing microbial life. I'll be doing an aerated tea in this video. The aeration bubbles help pull off those microbes off of the compost and into the tea. When making compost tea, the most important thing to remember is not to use chlorinated water or water that has chloramine in it. Well water or rainwater are going to be your best options. Chlorine and chloramine are meant to kill off bacteria and we want to grow that good bacteria and fungi. So that water needs to be neutralized. You can use a powdered citric acid to neutralize that chlorine and chloramine. You'll want to use about a half of a teaspoon per five gallons of water. Then you want it to aerate for about 10 minutes. Then you should be good to go. Most of the time I use our irrigation water, which comes from the Virgin River, but sometimes it's super muddy and I have to use that tap water. And one of the things that I found that works really good is using humic acid to neutralize that chlorine and chloramine. Humic acid ties up the chlorine and chloramine ions. Plus, humic acid provides some food for our microorganisms, particularly the fungi. Humic acid helps the plants uptake nutrients, so it just makes sense to use humic acid to neutralize that chlorine and chloramine. You'll need a tea bag. You can make one or even buy a paint screen bag that's meant to fit over a five gallon bucket at your hardware store. For water that is chlorinated, add one half cup of humic acid straight into the compost bag. Run the water over the humic acid and let it sit for 10 minutes with the pump running, and then it should be good. I wasn't sure that this was going to work when I first did this, so I used a chlorine test strip to see if I had any chlorine in it. And sure enough, we were negative. Zero chlorine. I use a five gallon bucket to brew my tea in, and that gives me enough to feed this 3,000 square foot garden. I'll be feeding the tea. This will help multiply those microorganisms for when we spray them out on our garden. Liquid fish hydrosylate a liquid kelp and the humic acids that we're going to use to neutralize our water with are all great foods for the fungi that's going to be in our tea. Generally there's enough bacteria in the compost that we don't need to feed it and more on that in just a minute. Here's a fun little tidbit. Soils that are more acidic, low on the pH scale, will be more fungal dominated and soils that are more alkali, higher on the pH scale, are generally more bacteria dominated. When I first started my garden here, it had a fairly high pH of an 8.2. That's high enough that some vegetables don't grow well. Over the years of adding compost and applying compost tea that is more fungal driven, my pH now is pretty much neutral. Teas that are fed foods to feed the fungi are gonna be a more fungi type of a tea. If you have acidic soil, your soil would more than likely benefit from a tea that was made more bacteria dominant. If you want to make a more bacteria driven tea, then you'll want to feed it some sugar and the best choice for that is just a black strap molasses. Without using a microscope to look to see what's living in your soil, you can't know for absolute sure, but this is still a pretty darn good indicator. In my soil, I'm going to be making a fungal driven tea. Even though it's neutral, I wouldn't mind it to be down just a little bit lower because plants grow best in just a little bit lower than neutral soils. For a five gallon bucket of water, you're gonna want five cups of compost, whether it's a good compost that you've purchased or even some compost that you've made. I'll be using my compost here. You can tell that it's not broke down all the way, but it doesn't heat up anymore and it smells just like earth. You can also use worm castings if you didn't have any compost, but you're going to be using a lot less. You're only going to be using about two to three cups per five gallons. But you can also mix your worm castings along with your compost and that makes an excellent tea as well. Good compost will generally have more fungi in it than worm castings and worm castings are going to have more bacteria. This is all going to depend on how the compost was made and what the ingredients were put into the compost. Put the compost in a tea bag and submerge and rub the bag to break down the aggregates and the particles to get the sediments out. This just gives that compost tea a jump start. 
more microorganisms in that tea for multiplying faster when we apply it out to the plants and the soil. That water should be a nice dark brown. Now we can add the foods. We don't want to do it before because we're adding that fish in there. And if we're massaging that compost, we're going to get pretty fishy and stinky. Add only one tablespoon of fish hydrosylate. Fish hydrosylate is different than fish emulsion. Fish emulsion has been stripped of all of its oils. And fish hydrolysate still has all of its oils in it and all of those amino acids. So just know that they are different. Kelp meal is the other food that we're going to be using. You'll want a liquid kelp or a powdered kelp. The granular kelp doesn't break down fast enough. And we're only going to be using one tablespoon of this as well. These foods are important to help increase those microorganisms that we're brewing in our tea. To make aerated tea, you need lots of air movement to help pull off all those microorganisms off of that compost into that tea. A simple stirring with a stick once in a while just isn't going to be enough airflow. You need a lot of movement. Acquiring a good air pump can be done at a pet store, aquarium store, or even a hydroponics store. This is going to be your biggest expense when making compost tea, but one thing about it is it will last you for years. Those little fish pumps usually aren't enough and won't give you enough airflow. So you're going to want something that gives you a little bit more. General rule of thumb is going to be one liter per minute per gallon of water. So five liters per minute for my five gallon bucket. I have an aeration hose that's attached to my pump and it has to be weighted down. So I'll weight this down because we want that airflow right underneath that tea bag so that it can work those bubbles right up through that compost. Once the tea is fed and aerated, put a lid on it loosely to protect it from the UV rays. Every time I finish a batch, I'll use a brush to clean off the hose to help it from getting clogged. Brew your tea at the same temperature as to where you're going to be applying it. If you're going to be applying tea in the greenhouse, then brew your tea in the greenhouse. If you're going to be applying your tea outside, then brew your tea outside. There is an exact time to know when your tea is going to be ready. This all depend on the temperatures of the day and night and how active the tea is. You want to hit it at peak population of the microorganisms, but not overly brewed. More than likely, several days is going to be way too long, no matter how much you feed your tea. Within the first few hours, you'll start to see some bubbling, a little bit of white foam building, and this is perfectly normal. But what you don't want to see is the tea overflowing with bubbles going over the side. This is generally a sign that you probably fed it too much. Timing of when your tea is ready can be just a little tricky. It can be anywhere from 12 hours to 36 hours. This will totally depend on the ambient air. During the springtime, I usually plan on it taking almost 36 hours. And during the summertime, usually 12 hours is enough and it's ready to go. When compost tea is finished, it should be applied either to the ground or to the foliage of the plants immediately. You don't want it to sit around very long. Usually within an hour, it needs to be used up. When applying your compost tea to your garden, you can use a water can. This is good if you've got a small garden and if you're doing a soil dredge. But if you've got a larger garden, then you're probably going to want to have a pressurized sprayer. This makes it to where it goes a lot farther and it's a lot easier to apply. You just want to make sure that the filter on it isn't too fine because you want all of those good microbes to pass through that filter. This one here's filter isn't very fine and it doesn't have a filter on the tip. So it's perfect for doing my application of my compost tea. It's best to have a dedicated pump sprayer for your compost tea. You absolutely do not want to use one that's had an herbicide or a pesticide used in it. There's always a residue and that's going to kill off your microbes. Even though my compost tea was made with a tea bag and it's fairly clean, I still like to run it through some sort of a sieve or a strainer, but I don't want it to be too fine of a strainer. This one here is very fine and this can actually make it to where those microbes don't go through. So I like one that has just a little bit bigger hole in it and that'll just take out those big chunks so it will spray and not clog up my sprayer. There's so many dilution rates for compost tea that it can be a little bit confusing on what dilution rate to use. There's don't dilute, dilute one to five, one to 20. There's so many options out there. And in my opinion, I usually do a one to one when I have a stressed plant and I'm doing a root drench. This seems to pull them out of it very well and I've never had any problems diluting it one part water to one part compost tea as a root drench. For a root drench, I just pour the diluted tea around the base of the plant and let the soil absorb it in. 
When I'm using the tea as a foliar spray, as well as inoculating the soil, I use one part tea and five parts clean water. Make sure you have clean water for this as well. Remember, clean water is just chlorine and chloramine free water. I've made compost tea for a good many years and these dilution rates have worked really well for me. If you make compost tea and have a different dilution rate, then share with us what you do in the comments. Do you dilute it, don't dilute it, and what ratio do you use? When applying or spraying on your compost tea, whether it be foliage or on the soil, the best times to spray it is gonna be in the early morning or late afternoon when the sun isn't so intense. Where I've seen the biggest results when using compost tea is when a plant is stressed. It seems to pull it out really well. But the other thing is, is I really love it on my tomatoes and especially my strawberry plants. Compost tea can be sprayed as much as once a week, but I rarely have the time to do this, so I do strive to have at least one monthly application. Yes, making compost tea does take a little bit of time, but I thoroughly enjoy doing it because I know this has been a big benefit and a help to my plants and my garden soil. One last note, I don't think of compost tea as a substitute for compost, but I think of it as more like a support system for our plants by inoculating the soil with our good microorganisms. Do I think it's worth it making compost tea? Yes, I definitely do. May God bless you and we'll see you next time because it'll make it for those freaking little buggers don't slide through. It's like your sprayer. It's like your sprayer. You have a deli deliferent. 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 What's, it? What's deliferent? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll get off. <laughs> also is a good food for the fungal food. A good food for the fungal food. <laughs> if you make compost tea, then let us know in the compost. In the compost. <laughs> Tomatoes. Month a month. Month a month. Okay then. One of you, one of you, these choices. Bingo. That was stupid. <laughs> <laughs>